What do you guys think? Is this orange glow sort of appropriate here for this party poker event? Or a little too weird? Yeah, I think it's a little too weird. Hang on a second. A little more reasonable. Not the best lighting, but it'll work. So, here we are. Greetings. Greetings again. Casino Barcelona party poker event. Today is the 1100 euro open event. One million dollar guarantee. Coming at you from this pretty beautiful ballroom if I don't say so myself pretty awesome setup they have going on here pretty romantic you know just uh, playing a playing a casual 1100 euro poker tournament here in the heart of Barcelona Spain so we are already underway here we start with a million in chips and I'm actually here on the first break we are through three levels of play already and a few hands to dive into action is gonna pick up here as we are eight-handed playing the 5k 10k level with a 10k ante on the blind. So again, how this works is there is one person who pays the antes for the entire table and in these party poker events, that person is on the button. By the way, this is highly recommended, this uh, this form of having one person play pay all of the antes rather than each person anteing every hand. Speeds things way up. Anyway, here we are, 5k, 10k level with 10k ante on the button. Eight handed and the under the gun plus one player makes it 25k to go. I look down at pocket queens next to act and even though it's pretty early position to put in a three bet here, uh, this player has already shown as I've been sitting here to be playing lots of hands. So I'm pretty happy to put in a three bet here and try and isolate with pocket queens next to act. I go ahead and make it 70k to go. There's a middle position player who called calls and the initial raiser folds. So we're going heads up to a flop here. Ace jack four with two spades and one club. Not the ideal flop, so I check it over to him and he puts out a bet. He bets 130K here and I don't think I can give up to just one bet. Uh, I want to check call the flop and see what develops on the turn here. Maybe he'll shut down. The turn comes a deuce of clubs, puts up a second flush draw. Check it over to him again and he still bets. He bets 200,000 this time. Just gonna have to fold, uh, pretty bad situation. He's weighted fairly strong when he cold calls a three bet and betting on the flop, betting on the turn, continuing. Just can't continue here with pocket queen. So I let it go and my opponent shows us ace, king of clubs, flopped, top hair, top kicker, turn, not flush draw. Pretty good situation for him, bad situation for us, but let it go there on the turn. Next interesting hand, the action folds to the cutoff who opens for 25K. I looked down an eight, nine off suit in the big blind and once again, kind of a villain dependent situation I think, but 25K uh, already in for 12K with the ante in play. So I go ahead and defend it. The flop comes jack seven, six rainbow. So we flop ourselves an open ender. I check it to the initial razor, puts out a bet, 30K. I go ahead and call. Turn pairs the six. I check it over to him and he checks back. River brings a deuce and eight high. I want to try and fold out some high card holdings. I don't expect to ever fold uh, too many pairs here. So I don't think I need to bet too big. Just gonna try and make a, uh, a cheap, relatively cheap bluff here. And like I said, pulled out ace high, king high type hands. So I bet 45K and my opponent checks his cards and then folds it pretty quickly. So pretty good result there with the eight high. And one more hand, the under the gun plus two player limps in, folds to me in the big line with 10-7 offsuit and I check my option. Flop comes king 10-7. So we flop bottom two pair here. I'm gonna lead out on a uh, connected wet board. Expect to get lots of calls here from various holdings. So I go ahead and bet 30K. My opponent makes the call and we see a nine of hearts, which puts again a second flush draw on board. We lose to queen jack now obviously and king nine, but there are seemingly lots of hands that we can still get pretty good value from that should continue, such as a king with a straight draw. So I'm gonna bet again and I bet 85K this time. Once again, my opponent makes the call. We're off to a river card, which is the ace of hearts, bringing in the backdoor flush draw. This time I decided to slow down. I decided to check it since we can't get value from busted uh, club flush draws. Could be losing to some, uh, some additional two pairs now and just gonna check it over to him and maybe check call, but depends a little bit on his sizing. So I check it over to him and my opponent ends up checking back, feeling pretty good about my hand. I roll it over and my opponent rolls over king seven off suit. So not a good situation there on the flop. Definitely could have lost more if he puts in a raise. Um, interesting uh, hand selection going on. 
and uh, not going my way so far in the early going. Break number one, gonna be getting back after it. Uh, down to about half of my stack now, maybe a little over 500K, maybe upwards of 550K. Again, we started with a million in chips. So looking for some run good in the next few levels. Hopefully, see a bit of a turnaround. Let's go. Hope for some run good, let's do this. for me this tournament. Picked up pocket threes, that didn't work out. Pocket sevens, that didn't work out. Picked up pocket tens, uh, where there was an early position limp and a late position raise. And I just flatted from the small blinds, which I'm not too sure about. I think my stack was about 35 big blinds or so. It's gonna be tough there to find too many flops that I'm, that I'm thrilled with and be playing that out of position. So not too sure if I really love my flat there. Might prefer a three bet facing a late position raise after an early position limper. Anyway, I flatted, early position player called, flop came down ace-queen high, flop checked around, and on the turn, I check called a bet, a very small bet. On the river, it just went check-check, and I lose to a pretty weak ace. So if I put in the three bet there, obviously the weak ace is gonna fold, probably find a way to win that one post-flop, assuming I don't face a ton of pressure from the late position player. So that happened, and then uh, the last hand, uh, there was an early position raise, a call in middle position, and I had maybe 10 big blinds at this point. Looked down at ace, 10 of diamonds. I just went with it. Royal flush draw looks good pre-flop, um, but no love post-flop. And that's that, that's, uh, that's the tournament. So not a whole lot to, uh, to really mention there. And it's back, it's back to the grind, back to the usual grind. I'm gonna head over to the cash games now. And I'm gonna check out these 510 games. There's three 510 games currently happening. So let's get in there and see if there's any fun to be had in the cash games. And uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too tilted, by the way. Um, certainly uh, it can be kind of tilting to, you know, have a little bit of hype going on in your head, try and get in there in the, uh, the 1K event here in Barcelona, but it's just the way, it's just the nature of these tournaments. Um, you're only gonna cash somewhere around 15 to 20% of the time if that's, uh, that's gonna be on the high end. That's uh, the, the really good tournament players, which I obviously have a lot of work to do to uh, expect that sort of a return, but um, that's at best four out of five times not making any money. So back at it, back after the grind, back to work. Let's hop in these cash games and see if we can win some money. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, poker is underway here. 510, no limit hold'em. There's a straddle on in this hand. There's an under the gun raise to 60, and right away we picked up a pretty premium hand here, pocket kings, uh, just next to act, under the gun plus one. I decided flat here, uh, since at a, at a full table, I don't really have too many bluffs, if any, uh, from under the gun plus one. So rather than raise, I tend to flat pretty much my whole range, my, my whole continuing range from under the gun plus one. So that's what I do here. The player next to me calls and everyone else folds. So three ways to a flop, which comes jack nine four with a flush draw. Under the gun player checks and I definitely want to put out a bet here with the over pair on a semi wet board. So I make it 90 and the player on my left makes the call. Original razor folds. So we're going heads up to a turn card, which is the seven of spades, which not really my favorite card here since it completes the front door flush and some potential straight draw as well. With all that being the case, I decide to check it over to him and my opponent checks back. River's an offsuit ace. Again, maybe not my favorite card in this situation. So I decided to check it. Once again, my opponent checks back and we are gonna win this hand after I table the kings and my opponent mucks. Not exactly a massive profit there with the pocket kings, but little something, something in the right direction. In this next hand, several of the players are away from the table, so we're playing five-handed. Folds to the cutoff who open limps, and I look down at ace-queen off suit on the button. Happy to raise it up here, so I make it 40 to go. Only the limper calls. 
Heads up to a flop this time, which comes king, 10, four, two diamonds. He checks it over to me. I just decided to check it back with my ace high plus gutter ball. Turn pairs the board on the four diamonds, puts a third diamond up there. Checks it over to me. Still just gonna check down here with my ace high. I would expect to have pretty decent showdown value here, uh, some reasonable amount of the time. However, we pick up additional showdown equity with the river offsuit jack. What's interesting though, is that my opponent snap bets 110 euros pretty much before the river even hit. It seemed like he hesitated slightly when the river hit, but just snap throws 110 euros out there, which is a slight overbet. So since there's three to a flush and a paired board, I don't really think I can raise on the river facing an overbet here. So I just go ahead and flat call. Just played a little bit cautious and my opponent shows us king four of spades. So ace high straight is not going to be winning this hand. Full house is going to be winning this hand. Turns out a uh, C bet on the flop or the turn wasn't going to be very effective either way. And I guess we minimized the damage making the, uh, the straight on the river there and only flat calling there on the river. All right, next interesting hand, there are three limpers. Button puts in a raise and makes it 60 to go. And we're in the small blind looking down at pocket threes. In this situation, I sort of want the button to have a really good hand because if I set mine and connect, then it's much more likely that I will be getting paid off much more frequently. So I need those implied odds to come through more often and I want the button to not be you know, putting in a squeeze type play, a uh, isolation raise, using the button as a position raise. Wanted to actually have a premium here. And just sort of based on the way this, uh, this player has been playing, I don't think she's uh, getting too out of line. I make the call here, expecting it to go multi-way, put some uh, more money in the pot from those limpers. And that's what happens somewhat. Two players behind me call. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes pretty favorable for us. Nine, nine, three, rainbow. Flop ourselves a full house here. I put in the check and the two players behind me check over to the razor who puts out a bet. She bets 260 euro here, which is great to see because that's on the large side, closer to pot. Don't think I need to put in a raise here. I think I can slow play it. If someone behind me happens to have a nine, that's great, but uh, don't want to fold anybody out at this point. So I just go ahead and flat call. The two players behind me fold. So we are going heads up to a turn card. Turn is a great card. Turn is a deuce of clubs. Shouldn't change anything. Shouldn't scare anybody. So we aren't super deep in this situation. And my thinking is that if I lead out here and lead out small, it's gonna be basically impossible for her to fold here on the turn. We'll bloat the pot a little bit further and then there won't be too much more money behind on the river to just get stacks in. I decided to bet 280 euro here. That should leave us approximately 650 to 700 euros going into the river, which is somewhere around half pot or maybe even less not too much money left behind and it seems pretty impossible for her to fold an overpair here she does go ahead and make that call so things are shaping up very nicely here and we see an offsuit king on the river so we presume that she did have an overpair there but certainly not going to be uh, afraid of any of the uh the overcards that might hit the board there on the river if she does happen to have pocket queens or pocket jacks then she's probably just gonna check it back here if we check to her on this river card. If she happens to have ace-king somehow, then she's probably not gonna be able to fold if we jam the 650 or so in there. If she has aces, she probably won't be getting away. So all signs seem to point towards a jam here. So that's what I do. It's 650 or 670, jam it all in there, and we get a snap call. I show and she shows us pocket kings. Disaster, disastrous hand. Was hoping that uh, maybe the run bad was, was behind us during this stretch, but clearly not. Don't see how I could have played this any differently to get away from this situation. It's kind of just like an auto double up for, uh, for my opponent here. We got pretty much what we wanted. We've got a lot of money in the middle uh, with her drawing extremely slim. And then there's just not gonna be any getting away from it on the river. Just another cooler, tack it up on the list to the uh, list of things that are going bad over the somewhat recent stretch. Carrying on, powering through, looking down at pocket sixes, putting in a raise to 30, see two calls. Flock comes jack five deuce. I decided to check it with the middling pair and action checks all the way through. 
Turns a good card, it's an offsuit three, so we add a straight draw to our pair and kind of assume that we should have the best hand here somewhat frequently. So I put out a bet and try and uh, deny some equity. I make it 50 to go and the cutoff makes the call. Heads up to a river card, which is a deuce. I don't think I'm gonna be getting too much value here from worse. And there's some chance that my opponent could have sevens, eights, nines, hand like that, where we end up value towning ourselves a little bit. So I check it, my opponent checks back, we show. We get shown pocket fours, but that's no good. Pretty good at winning these small ones, not so good at winning the big ones. Not exactly the best recipe, but we'll take what we can get here. All right, one more interesting hand here. Very interesting hand that develops. And by the way, I failed you guys in uh, recording this hand. You know what that means. That's a charity donation of $25, but it is much too important to omit from this story. So here we go. No hand footage, unfortunately, but $25 to a charity. And let's get into it. So there's the middle position raised to 30. I look down at 10, eight of diamonds and I'm in position. Happy to put in a three bet here with a suited gapper and play this one if we do get called in position. I make it 100 to go and the big line puts in a four bet. It makes it 280 to go. The middle position player cold calls the four bet. So it's a pretty interesting spot. Certainly could find a fold here, but we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,700 euros effective with big blind, I think. Pretty deep here. So since we're getting a pretty good price and we're in position, we're closing the action, all those factors lead me into a call, along with the obvious one of folding is very boring. You guys know the drill. So I make the call. Uh, can certainly find a fold there. I wouldn't hate a fold, obviously, but uh, it's only 180 more versus two players in a fairly deep situation with very playable hand. Tossing the money and we're seeing a flop three ways, which comes pretty nice. 10, eight, three with two spades. Big line puts out a bet, which is great to see, and he bets 400. The middle position player calls. So that's a lot of money in the middle already. That's 800 euro in the middle on the flop. That's 840 in the middle from pre-flop action. So already 1600 euros in there. The middle position player has somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,800 euros uh, total at this point, including his 400 euro call. So with all the money in the middle already, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,600, and those stack sizes, and the board being somewhat connected and wet, again, flush draw available, straight draws available. Middle position player calling, he could potentially have a, have a, a flush draw here. There's gonna be lots of cards where I'm not exactly as sure whether or not I have the best hand, so. If another spade rolls off on the turn, not exactly gonna be super sure where I'm at and might be a little bit hesitant to get all the money in on that type of a card. Along with maybe a three, we wouldn't wanna see a three come off on the turn. All that in mind, kinda like a jam here with these stack sizes and that's what I settle on. Jam it all in there and the big line goes into the tank and is thinking for a long time. At this point, I'm rooting for a call because I know I'm ahead, but the big blind eventually decides on a fold, which puts the decision back to the middle position player. Thinking it over, and uh, doesn't think quite as long as the big blind player, but he eventually decides on a call. So things are happening, there's a lot of money in the middle, and my opponent asks if I wanna run it twice. As per usual, I say, sure, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not usually the one to suggest it, but don't really care, happy to do whatever. So we're off to see two turns and two river cards. And the first run out comes 4-4, four, four, which not really loving because I thought there was a decent chance my opponent could be calling with an overpair in that situation pre-flop. Second run out brings us a three on the turn and a brick on the river. Again, I'm not really loving this situation and I'm a little worried when I show the 10-8 and my opponent shows us pocket queens. Yet another disaster here in this 510 cash game. Just not, uh, things, things not falling in our favor, to say the least. We're gonna get scooped here in this, in this pot, in this hand. My opponent ends up with a better two pair on both boards, which the odds of that happening, the odds of uh, the pocket queens scooping this pot, according to uh, my more math inclined friends, is seven and a half percent. This is what seven and a half percent feels like, and unfortunately it comes at a time that is a very sizable pot. That's, what can you do? This is, uh, this is math, seven, seven and a half percent, it's real. Seven and a half percent happens, and uh, 
It's happened in this instance. up the session and uh, yeah as you can tell it didn't really go my way got the money in really well um, for the most part that's actually one of the uh, the bigger pots that I've ever played especially considering that these are euros we're dealing with the bad news is we book a loss here we get into this game for I think 2,900 euros cash out of the game for this much it's a carry your chips in your hand kind of a night 644 euros not super ideal, and uh, this is uh, this is poker. This is the way it goes sometimes. Professional poker includes getting the money in very good, coming out on the wrong side of it. But that's the bad news. The good news is we're in Barcelona. Today is only Sunday. We're here until Thursday. Obviously, run good happens everywhere, and run bad happens everywhere. We've we've had some run bad back home in Las Vegas, and. Uh, as soon as I step outside of this casino, I'll be walking through the streets of Barcelona. Won't be doing too much exploring, just gonna head back to the hotel, get ready to do some editing on these vlogs, and uh, after that, it's gonna be a combination of hanging out here in the casino and hanging out on the streets of Barcelona. Some food, some drinks, take it all in. Oh, oh it's, uh, our, uh, missing, how are we doing this again? Our, our mission tonight is to not get as drunk as we did one year ago on the vlog. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> Man, ever since I started that LASIK eye surgery challenge, am I not destined to have good eyesight? Is this what this is about? The universe telling me this? Oh.